Hello, and welcome to a side video for my Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity Let's Play. I'm Mr. Viper Fang, and I figured before I continue with the main story missions, why not go over some of the uh, side missions that pop up after uh, beating each of the uh, first four Chapter 2 missions? After you defeat... After you, uh, beat all of the, uh, Chapter 2 missions, uh, before going into the final one, uh, a whole bunch of, uh, side objectives and shops will appear on the map that you can unlock and, uh, take on. In particular, there are, uh, some missions that involve, uh, training for the, uh, champions that you unlock. I'm going to be going over each of these uh, missions in this video, and yeah, you'll see what they're all about. First one I'm going to be doing is Zerobosa's training. There's also going to be Mipha's training, Rivali's training, and Daruk's training. So let's go on ahead and get things started with Zerobosa's training. I'm going to go on ahead and uh, bring in uh, this. So yeah, uh, this is basically just uh, extra missions that allow you to get a feel for how each of these characters performs uh, on the battlefield. And in my opinion, it's a good way of uh, gauging if you're really going to like their playstyles or not. And in the case of Rivali, this would probably be your very first time using him in uh, combat. Because during his uh, Chapter 2 mission, you actually don't play as him. You actually fight him and unlock him after the mission. So yeah, let's go on ahead and uh, just play through each of these four missions in this video. And we'll uh, see if we like any of them. So Urbosa's uh, training in particular has a time limit and a certain amount of enemies that you need to defeat. Taking out the captains will uh, give you a good amount of experience, but honestly, you really don't have to take care, take them out if you uh, want, if you don't want to. But it might be a good idea to take out the captains so that they aren't blindsiding you later on. Also, performing a weak point uh, smash against one of them is a good way of clearing out a whole bunch of enemies, so it might be a good idea to take them out anyway. Alright, so once the 100 KOs are taken care of for this mission, you go into the second phase, which has you taking out more Gerudo Captains. So, if you want to get a head start on this objective, it might be a good idea just to take them out in the first phase. And then you won't have as many to take out uh, in this part of the mission. Once all the Gerudo Captains are defeated, the mission is over, and you have won. These little side missions are reminiscent to Adventure Mode from the original Hyrule Warriors, in my opinion. 
you have a smaller portion of the map to traverse around, and you have a very specific objective to go after throughout the entire mission. In this case, it was take out a certain amount of enemies and then defeat a, uh, a certain amount of captains. Each of these missions will reward you with uh, certain materials and a special crystal that I assume is going to be used at uh, for endgame stuff. So yeah, uh, with that out of the way, let's go on ahead and take care of the second mission of the four that I'm covering today, which is Mephis training. And I'm just going to up her damage for this one to make things go down a little bit faster. So let's go on ahead and start. While each of these four missions are going to be very similar, there are there is some variance in them. For example, for uh, Mephis' mission here, you have to take out 300 enemies as opposed to the 100 from Robosas. And there's probably going to be a whole bunch of uh, moblins that you have to take out. It may be, I think it's like three moblins for this mission after uh, you defeat the 300, or it might just be 300 enemies in general. A good piece of advice for this mission is if you've taken a lot of damage, uh, you can use Mipha's special attack to actually restore your health a little bit. It doesn't restore it all the way, but uh, for starting out with Mipha, she won't have a lot of health, so it's a good way of restoring a good chunk, if not all of her health, depending on how much you've lost. Also, weak point smashes are a good way of taking out a whole swath of enemies all at once just because of how bunched up they are in this mission. The same thing goes with her special attack. Another good piece of advice I have is uh, not just for these missions, but in general, the rods are very good for exposing weak points constantly and being able to take out larger enemies like moblins and uh, keep bosses quickly. So yeah, as I was explaining a little bit earlier, the objectives are going to be a little bit varied for these uh, training missions. In the case of Mifas, all I had to do was just take out 300 enemies. I could have ignored the mob moblins if I wanted to, but they are a very good way of taking out a whole group of enemies at once and reducing the amount of time you need to complete the objective.
And note that each of these missions will give an ethereal stone at the end upon completing. And I assume that these are going to be used for uh, special unlockables toward the end of the game. So it might be a good idea to go after these. And not just blow through the entire story. This is one of the reasons why I'm going through all the side objectives on my main, uh, on my main profile. Alright, so with Mifas and Urbosas out of the way, I'm gonna go on ahead and just, uh, go down in the order that I, uh, got all the champions in the, uh, main videos for the Let's Play. Let's go on ahead and do Rivalis. And for him, uh, I think he's gonna be okay without any, uh, food buffs, so... Let's just go on ahead and get right into it. Oh yeah, on the little loading screens, if you didn't know, you can actually uh, hit some of the buttons on your controller to control your uh, little egg guardian guy. The X button will make his little uh, whistle pop up. The L and R buttons will let you move him left or right, and double tapping on uh, the left or right buttons will get him to dash a little bit. And pressing the B button will make him jump. Alright, so this would probably be your first instance of being able to play as Rivali. His game is being able to do a lot of aerial combos and, uh... Just basically raining down arrows upon enemies from the sky. His ground kit isn't as strong compared to his aerial kit, but there are ways of uh, using his ground combos to get him into the air and just taking out a whole lot of enemies uh, pretty quick. And after that particular uh, ground combo, he will be up in the air for you to be able to take out enemies. And yeah, while Rivali doesn't get like any special bars or uh, fancy uh, ground combos like some of the other characters, you do want to take advantage of his aerial combos because that's where most of his strength is. So, I think I have to defeat a few more enemies to get some more to appear, so... Let's see if I missed, uh, too many over here. And unlike some of the other, uh, training missions, you have a lot more time as, uh, Rivali. Oh, there we go. There we go, I got some more to appear. I guess I had to defeat 250 to get them to appear. So that was this that was the first part of the uh, Rivali's training. Second part is taking out a couple of moblins. So so far he's had the most enemies to take out, but he's had the most time to do it in. Oh, 
There we go. A lot of the stuff I've seen online about uh, Rivali's uh, gameplay is uh, being able to just uh, run circles around the enemies and just break in their weak points in one go. Okay, that was too early. Let's go on in and just do this. I'm a little low on health and I don't think I have any uh, food recharges left. There we go. Rivali's main weapon is a bow, so he's gonna be getting all of the uh, bow weapon drops. Even though Link uses one, but his is a just a pre just a regular old bow, so you can't really change that around. So if every if ever, whenever you get a bow drop, that's gonna be Rivali's. And mission complete, and we got a whole bunch of good stuff. Alright, and the final mission that we're going to be taking care of for this video is Daruk's training. We're going to be playing as Daruk and getting a little more uh, accustomed to his playstyle. Because unlike uh, Definitive Edition or just Hy the first Hyrule Warriors in general, uh, there's a lot more variation for all of the characters in this game. Probably because the roster isn't as expansive as Hyrule Warriors was because we're only able to draw from one game for Age of Calamity. Alright, so as I was uh, explaining a little bit in uh, the main story mission for recruiting Daruk, he kind of reminds me of Darunia. And of everyone that has a guard in the game, uh, his is uh, the. His actually uh, protects him all around, unlike uh, just from the front. And one, and his uh, main gimmick is being able to create magma pillars and just uh, uh, pieces of uh, rock from the ground, and then exploding them for a lot of damage. And of course, he can just roll around. And his uh, str strong attack when you uh, when you're dashing with him is just r going up in the air and slamming down as a as a boulder. And just like that, I've taken out half of the enemies needed to complete the mission. Let's go up here and take out these guys so that we can get some more enemies to spawn. Because if we don't, we're going to lose the mission. Daruk's bomb, bomb uh, glyph in particular allows you to create a whole bunch of uh, magma pillars everywhere that you can blow up. Yeah, that's one of the main things I like about uh, Age of Calamity is all of the glyphs that uh, each character has does things completely differently from another. So, for example, Impa's bomb uh, is basically a firework that launches in the air, while Daruk's is a giant bomb that uh, creates magma pillars that you can blow up. Can you handle it? 
Goblin defeated. Let's go on ahead and clear out the rest of the enemies here and finish off the mission. And if you don't have any uh, magma pillars to uh, blow up, you can just uh, press uh, his unique action to just uh, do a fist pump. A uh, fist pump in the air. I only have a few enemies left, and I think after that we're done with Daruk. Alright, where are the remaining 14 that I'm looking for? There's a few over here. Ah, here's some more. They just popped in. Okay, so he does have a second objective. Ah, I got a couple of moblins to take out. Let's stun him. And just like that, we have completed Daruk's training. As you've seen, each of the four champions plays very differently from each other. Each has their own strength and strengths and weaknesses, and being able to play around them will be able to maximize how effective you are with them. And of the four champions uh, that you get in the game, I think my favorite one is Urbosa, honestly. Being able to just uh, dance around enemies and pull off easy flurry rushes, I kind of like that playstyle. My second place would probably be either Daruk or Mifa, honestly. But all of them do play very well. And so now that that's out of the way, that's uh, all that's... Yeah, that's it for the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, getting a taste of each of the characters and how they all play. And uh, let me know who, which of the four champions you'd like to play as. Take it easy. I'll see you later.